Hey everyone, so I bought this Xbox 360 about five months ago, and I had a plan that I wanted to try making a video of me fixing the Ring of Death. Unfortunately, I didn't really get around to it till around now, but hey, there's no time like the present. So I did a little bit of research and I realized that one of the most common issues you can find with a Ring of Death console is the E74 error code. Which basically means that the problem is often caused by a hardware problem, most commonly the HANA chip warping away from the motherboard. But anyways, I decided to go on eBay and try purchasing a console with this error code, and I ended up finding one for about 30 bucks. But just to be safe, I ended up messaging the seller on the side, and I asked if the seal was still intact on the Xbox, or at the very least if he knows if it's ever been opened before. He told me it hasn't, so I figured, hey, what the heck, I might as well just give it a shot. So I went ahead and I bought it, and it's just kind of been sitting around up until now. So let's just go ahead and head over to it. So off rip, taking this thing out of the box, I was immediately suspicious because of how clean the console was. I'm thinking to myself, who keeps a broken console this clean? But anyways, let's plug this up to a monitor and verify what we got here. Sure enough, we got it all set up and there is the E74 error code right there on the screen and I have a secondary error code of 1022. For anyone who's interested, I'll leave a link in the description to a video that explains the secondary error codes a little more in depth. But anyways, when I looked into my secondary error code and what it means, this was the description that I got. This error is caused by a cold solder joint under the GPU HANA chip or in between. Mostly, it is one of the outer solder balls on the side facing the HANA chip, so a shim increases the chances of success quite a bit. So I think I'm going to try to reflow the board here, but the first thing that we're going to have to do is take the console apart. Here's some of the things that I'm going to be using throughout this video. Some isopropyl alcohol, I'm going to be using 91% today. A small tool that we're going to be using kind of as a push tool. Honestly, you can use anything that you want for this as long as it's small. I'm going to be using just a tiny Allen wrench. But if you don't want to use just random items, they do sell disassembly kits. I don't really know how much they go for, but I will leave one in the description below at the end of the video. Next, we're also going to need some thermal paste. I'm using Arctic Silver 5. Your buddy Jared that just wants to come by and help. A flathead screwdriver that we can kind of use as a pry tool. And a Torx security screwdriver set because Microsoft has to be fancy with their screws. Again, I'll leave a link for everything that I'm using today in the description below. So to start things off, we're going to remove the front faceplate on the Xbox 360. This comes off pretty easily. I usually just grab it by the flap here and then gently push outwards and the whole thing usually just comes right off. Next, we'll remove the hard drive from the side of the console. This is pretty easy. Just press the button and take it out. And after it's out, we'll also remove this plastic grate underneath it. You can take your flathead screwdriver and angle it near one of the tabs on the back to slowly pop out the first corner. Now we'll take our tiny Allen wrench and start pushing the tabs through the vents on the top of the console. You can't really see it on camera, but you can actually visually see where these tabs are pretty well. But all you have to do is just push the tabs in to release each part of the grate, and once you get them all pressed, it should just slide right out pretty easily. Now let's flip this over and start working on the other side as well. This is going to be the same process again, we're just going to have to individually press all the tabs around the grate. Again, easy to do, but just take your time. You don't want to use too much force or else you'll end up breaking the tabs on the console and it won't be very easy to put back together later on. So once you're on that side, we're going to turn over to the front of the console. Now if you look right here, you can see that the Microsoft sticker is still intact, but you know what? I'm still suspicious, so when I checked it out, I noticed that one side of the sticker was loosely put on. So I'm pretty sure somebody has been in this console and when it didn't work out, they put the sticker back on and sold it online. So hopefully I didn't get screwed on this, but I guess we'll find out more as we keep going on. Getting back on topic, we're going to start lifting the three tabs here that are on the front of the console. Again, just be gentle, don't pull too hard, you don't want to break any of these. Once the three are unlatched, we're going to flip over to the back of the console and push some more tabs in. Now, while we're back here, you're going to notice that there are seven indents here, and we're going to take our push tool and press these pins in while maintaining a little bit of force to pry the console apart, that way they don't snap back together. After that's all set, the bottom half of the console should now slide off pretty easily. Now, right away, just by looking at it, you might notice that the screws that are supposed to hold the X-clamps are gone. So now I'm really curious to see what's going on here. So let's keep going and see if we can get to the bottom of this. 
Luckily, the screws are kind of color coded, so we're going to start off by taking these six silver screws out of here. I kind of wish that I had the attachment to put these on a drill so I can just make this a little faster, but oh well, fast forwarding works just as well. Once that's done, we're going to head over to the front of the console again and take out the eject button. You should just be able to pull this one out with just a tiny bit of force. So now we should be able to take off the top half of the console shell finally and see what's going on here. Honestly, I wasn't expecting the RF shield to stay connected to the shell like that, but that's pretty cool too. Now let's start removing the disk drive. This should just lift right out of the console and all we have to do is unplug the ports from the back. While we're here though, we're also going to pop off this plastic piece here that helps redirect air from the fans. This is where the flathead screwdriver comes into place and you can just apply a small amount of pressure to pop these out pretty easily. Firmly grasp it! And since we're doing this, we might as well take the fans out as well. For this, we just have to unplug one of the ports here on the side, which again, the screwdriver can help you take out if you can't get your fingers in there. But getting the fans out themselves can be a little tricky because they're in there pretty tight. All we have to do is just pry a little bit at the top and then you should just be able to kind of bend it and slide it out. So I take it back a little bit about what I said about the console being too clean because these fans are caked with dust. So I guess I will have to end up cleaning this in the end but overall the fans are the dirtiest part of the Xbox so far. Now we're going to flip the console over and start removing the nine gold colored screws, which I believe hold the motherboard in place. I'm actually pretty grateful that the screws are colored, that way I don't have to sort through anything later on when we're putting this back together. Now we just have one more thing to take off before we can slip the motherboard out, and that's the front panel here where the power button is located. It's pretty simple to take off, you just have to pop off the white plastic piece here first, and once you have it popped off, you can see there are three screws right underneath that we'll have to take out. After that's done, you can just remove this piece and set it to the side. Now we can finally take the motherboard out of the case. Take your time with this part so you don't damage anything. In my case, it helps that I have another person here helping me hold down the housing while the other one takes the board out. And look at it. Just like I thought, we don't have any X clamps, and the last person that fixed this console put bolts in its place. So I guess it'll be interesting to see if I can get this going again. Again, there's quite a few videos that I've seen on YouTube claiming this method as a permanent fix for the issue. And since I didn't know much about this, I took to the internet to find out more. Asking around my Discord community, as well as certain Reddit communities, and the general consensus I got about this was that if you're no longer using the X clamps anymore, then the force will no longer be evenly distributed to the middle of the CPU or GPU, and instead with the bolts, it'll distribute the force around that spot, which can make your motherboard warp over time and cause it to kind of change shape and look almost like a banana. Unfortunately, I don't have an extra pair of X clamps right now, but I'm going to order some and I'll replace these off camera at a different time. But for now, let's just see if we can get this running first. Next, we're going to be removing the bolts here, that way we can take the heat sinks out. But I will say something that I wasn't prepared for when we were doing this, that there's actually a ton of washers that are attached to these screws. So about 16 of these fell out when we unscrewed this originally. Now this part I think is a little funny. It looks like the old thermal paste on the board is still somewhat fresh. I'm willing to bet that this was repaired somewhat recently and then when it didn't work, they just packaged it up and sold it to yours truly. So I have a microfiber cloth here and I applied a small bit of alcohol to it. And I'm just gonna clean these off since we're gonna be adding some new thermal paste shortly anyways. And since the paste is still somewhat fresh, everything's actually coming off super fast. So I can appreciate that at least. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the heat sinks, and again, hardly any effort, and they cleaned off pretty well. Once we're done with the cleaning, now we can start with the reflow process, which honestly, I'm not even sure if this will fix at this point. From the things I was reading online, the issue could be related to the GPU entirely, which means it has the possibility of red ringing again after we get it running. But again, I guess we'll deal with that if it ever comes to that point. So luckily for me, my basement is made pretty much out of cement, so I just did this in an open area on top of the metal housing on the Xbox. 
A lot of other people that have attempted this also do it on top of their oven because it's made to hold high heat. But I think this is gonna be fine for me today. I'm going to start by using my heat gun on a low setting, but on a high heat, and we're just going to quickly brush over the bottom half of the board. We're not really going to focus on anywhere in particular, we're just going to try heating up the board as a whole. We're pretty much just going to be maybe a fist length away from the board and go back and forth in this motion and then go up and down and we're just going to repeat this process for about two minutes or so. So I'll see you when this part's done. Now, after it's cooled down a little bit, we're going to flip this over and do the other side. This time, I switched the gun onto a high setting with a high heat, and we're just going to heat up the board as a whole pretty quickly, just like we did with the back side. But this time, we're going to take breaks and focus on the two areas where we took the heat sinks off. Just do a couple of circles around these areas, and then go back to heating up the board, but try to avoid any part of this that has any plastic pieces that could potentially melt. We're going to end up doing this for about four minutes, so I'll see you when this is done. Now that that's done, we need to let the board cool off to the touch, so I'm going to give this about five or ten minutes before I start handling it again, so I'll be right back. Okay, so now I brought the Xbox back over to the table, and we're going to start by applying some thermal paste to the chips here. A little bit goes a long way, but I usually make sure I cover as much of the chip as I can by spreading it around. You don't have to worry about these too much because when you put the heat sinks back in, they're basically going to be doing the same thing by smushing it. Speaking of which, these were a pain to put back in because most of these washers had to be doubled up and then screwed in from the back. So we had a little bit of a hard time trying to get a good camera angle of us doing this, but basically we just did one of these at a time and then tightened them up at the end. Now we can start putting this stuff back together a little bit more, but I think before we do it all the way, I'm going to end up testing this, that way I don't waste my time and have to take it back apart later. So let's start off by putting the motherboard back in the metal housing. Next we're going to pop the fans back in, make sure you don't forget to plug in the port as well. We're going to do the same thing with the disk drive, just plug it in and set it back down where it belongs. Next, we need to get that power button back in play here, so you just need to insert the piece back in, and then we have to tighten up those three screws that we took out earlier. Once this is done, I'm going to hook it back up to the power and test it so we can see what we're working with. Okay, and it looks like the red ring is gone, but now I'm seeing an error for a failed system update, most likely from the previous owner as well. This is a problem because I don't know what system update this console was originally running on. Luckily, I had an idea to check this error code on the screen around some of the older modding communities like Seven Sins, and I found someone having a similar issue back in 2013. This person believed that the 351F in the error code translates to the 13599 dashboard update. So I put the dashboard update on a USB drive and I started up the console and luckily it was the correct update. So I didn't have much trial and error cycling through any of the older or newer ones. So now we just have to let this install and then we'll see what we got. So everything seems to be running fine. I'm most likely going to wipe the drive here because it's got everything from the previous owner on it, but I'm glad to see that we got the Xbox working again. Hopefully this doesn't happen again and we can use this Xbox for future projects. But for now, let's just finish setting this thing back up. So for the rest of this, I'll kind of speed through everything, that way we can start wrapping this video up. We'll start by putting the white plastic piece back over the power button, which should just snap back into place. Next we'll put the 9 gold screws in to secure the motherboard in place. Next we'll have to take the disk drive back out so we can pop the plastic casing for the fans back in. And then just pop the disk drive back in there when we're done. Now we can put the top casing back on, so just align everything and snap that back into place. Then we can put the eject button back in, which you also just have to align and snap in. Almost done! Let's flip the console back over now and we'll put the long screws back into place. So I'll come back once I got that all tightened up. Now we'll quickly pop the bottom half of the case back in. You should hear everything snap back into place. And then we're going to switch over to the sides of the console to start popping these grates back in. And then we can pop the hard drive back in. 
And lastly, we just have to put the faceplate back on. And there we go, this thing is fully put together. So now let's set it back up to the monitor so we can get the full effect. Awesome, I'm pretty psyched that we could get this going. And I have to say, I probably will go back and put the X clamps back in at a later time to hopefully prevent the board from warping and this issue from happening again, hopefully. But otherwise, this was a fun little project and I think I'm going to enjoy tinkering with the Xbox 360 a little more. But I think that's about it for this video and I hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments section what kind of content you'd like to see me cover next and I will see you guys next time. Adios.